six rescued from 13,000 feet. Rocks or ice or snow, something is falling and then it just starts hitting us. We're hearing from the Portland climber who survived the brutal conditions on Mount Rainier for days. Speaking out against his high school in Vancouver. I've had friends get groped. I've had friends get thrown against walls because they're gay. I've had friends with nooses put around their neck. That senior now won't walk at graduation after he blasted his school for what he calls a lack of action on bullying and harassment. But school officials have a different opinion. Oh, And Drew hits the Willamette with some of the most experienced rowers ahead of this weekend's Dragon Boat races. Also, 96 years of donations. We look back on Portland's Sunshine Division and how it's grown to meet the needs of people all over the area. Your KGW News at Sunrise starts right now. <sighs> That's a big sigh of, a, of Friday relief there from Miss Melhoff. <laughs> Uh, Nina, maybe you were sighing at this beautiful shot from the waterfront. Yes. Uh, it ah. is City Fair's final weekend this weekend, <laughs> gang. We also have the Grand Floral Parade going on. We have dragon boat races. It's going to be a busy weekend around town. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Thank you for waking up with us. Another Rose Festival favorite is taking place this weekend, and our very own Rod Hill is checking out the Grand Floral Parade as folks get ready. All right, Rodney, take it away. What do you have for us? Yeah, good morning. <laughs> you know, Bernard, I think everybody would like to be in my shoes this morning because look at the beauty of these floats and look at the size of this gnome. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the gnome is bigger than I am. The beard, I wish I could touch it because it looks so amazingly soft. This is the Fred Meyer Garden Festival float that you will see in the Grand Floral Parade tomorrow. Again, it all starts at 10 o'clock. The work is always so, so amazing. Well, I'm looking at partly cloudy skies uh, here off of uh, Powell in southeast this morning, but radar is in fact showing scattered showers around the area. And remember, any time today, you'll see some blackening skies and at least a threat that you could get caught in a downpour, maybe some hail, maybe hear a rumble of thunder. Our day planner shows temperatures starting off around 50, and we're going to be doing well just to get up to around 60 or 61 for a high. But all of this ends tonight. And I think odds really favor nice but cool weather tomorrow for the Grand Floral Parade. Lacey Evans is checking your Friday morning commute. Good morning. Yes. Good morning, Rod. Thank you. And we're going to go live to Drive 8, 205 northbound in the Clackamas area. You can see some wet pavement out there, but nothing major. And uh, the drive looks really good. Uh, we were seeing some brake tapping on I-84 inbound approaching Lloyd Center, but it looks good now. We do have uh, some light brake tapping on I-5 southbound right here at the Interstate Bridge as well. And then a small lineup on SR-14 westbound. But again, it's a good looking Friday morning if you are headed around town. Brenda, I like the sound of it. Thank you, Lacey. Topping our news at six o'clock, a Portland man and three of his climbing buddies are safe after getting stranded on Mount Rainier. They spent four nights at 13,000 feet. The group dealt with high winds and snow and hypothermia until a rescue helicopter could reach them yesterday. They say they had to stay mentally strong to survive this. But there are people out there that care about us. They have no idea. They're just going through more pain probably than we were. And so I just, I kept yelling out to my, my friends that we have to get there. We have to finish this because we have to let them know that we're still around. Well, the climbers have frostbite, but we're told all of them are going to be okay. An armed standoff between a robbery suspect and police caused a big scare at a Portland Fred Meyer yesterday. Police say the man robbed the Coles on Northeast Halsey and pointed a gun at employees and then took off. Then when police cornered him at the Gateway Fred Meyer, they say he ran into the store. Officers evacuated the building and then called in the CERT team to negotiate. They got him into custody after about three hours and no one was hurt. We also get told we're too tall, we're too short. Too wide, too skinny, too smart, too dumb, too different. That local high school student we just heard from won't be walking at his graduation. He says it's because of a pre-graduation speech that he made this week. Yeah, he was critical of the high school and the district in that speech. KGW's Tim Gordon is live now in the newsroom. So, Tim, the student talked about bullying and sexual assault on campus. Right, Brenda, and he said that uh, staff at Heritage High School, that's in the Evergreen District in Vancouver, were not addressing the problems and even enabling them. 
That drew applause from many students, but not from administrators. 17-year-old Charles Chandler gave his speech with seniors in their caps and gowns as they do for some pre-graduation ceremonies. His speech started with the normal stuff, but then switched off approved script to describe a school environment rich with bullying and more. He mentioned sexual assault. Chandler went on to accuse the district of uh, siding with the accused instead of the victims. A school where the administration closes their eyes to everything that happens in the school. Their school, the sexual assault, the bullying, the depression, the outcast, and they do nothing to fix it. They just cast it aside like it's nothing. Now, after the speech, Chandler says he was pulled into a conference room by unhappy administrators. Then he says he was told he would not be able to walk at his graduation. The principal at Heritage sent a letter home to his families, writing Chandler's speech had many inaccuracies, inflammatory statements, and unsubstantiated accusations, adding that staff are dedicated to students' physical and emotional safety. Chandler says he's not trying to slam the school, but he does want to make students aware. I want them to know that the school is still a safe place, but if anything does happen, then they need to speak up. And they need to not, not just go to the administration, but find other ways to, to get help. Some discrepancy about the remedy on this, the uh, discipline, I guess. The, dis the district says it gave Chandler options and he could choose, uh, and he chose actually not to walk at graduation. Chandler says not true. He agreed to help build an anti-bullying curriculum as an option, but then the district told him he couldn't walk anyway. Now there's a social media campaign supporting Chandler, trying to get him to his graduation ceremony, and that's blowing up on change.org. Back to you. Come on this, Tim, thank you. Now to national headlines in your morning rush. An investigation is underway into what caused a tactical vehicle to overturn at West Point in New York, killing one cadet and injuring 21 others. The Academy has not released the name of the cadet who was killed. The accident happened on their campus as they were on their way to a training exercise. The Federal Communications Commission is moving again to crack down on those robocalls. Commissioners voted to let phone companies block unwanted calls. Spammers make an estimated five billion of them every month, nearly double the total of just two years ago. The Federal Reserve could cut interest rates for the first time in 10 years. That depends on the numbers in May's job report, which comes out today. Economists predict the U.S. added 180,000 jobs last month. And that's your Morning Rush. All right, Nina, from the Morning Rush, we're going to head out and about on this Friday morning. And we're talking Rose Festival right now because we've already covered Fleet Week this week on the show. And Rod's on the road this morning getting us ready for tomorrow's Grand Floral Parade. But we also wanted to highlight another Rose Festival event that's happening this weekend. And it involves boats just like the one you see right here. The Dragon Boats, my friends, yes, the Rose Festival's annual Dragon Boat races will feature dozens of teams, including one that's made up entirely of what you might call senior paddlers. They call themselves the Golden Dragons. And now we are on the water in a Dragon Boat with members of the aforementioned Golden Dragons. Let me ask you, Golden Dragons, how you feeling this morning? Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling great right now because I have stopped paddling. <laughs> they are doing the work. I will do the interview, and I interview right now. He is Larry Totsky, yep. average age of the Golden Dragons. Average age of this boat is about 70.1 years. Oldest paddler in the Golden Dragons? In the Golden Dragons yes. is 88. You told me that come race day, Saturday and Sunday, you will be out here to win, to do the best you can. But I know there's more to this group than just winning on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, we uh, paddle every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m all year round, weather permitting. I take it and we do that for exercise, we do that for camaraderie, uh, we do it because it's fun. I just assumed that you would compete during Rose Festival Dragon Boat Weekend in a master's division. There is no master's division. No master's division. So no. you could really look across at the start line and see a team next to you that's filled with people that are 50 years younger than you. That's true. What is that like? It's uh, no big deal because our concentration is in this boat. So now I'm feeling a little guilty. I should be paddling with the group. Can you give me the refresher course on how to do it, Larry? Sure. You want to put your paddle in the water at the same time as Scott in front of you. Golden Dragons on three. One, two, three. Golden Dragons! Woo! <laughs> so we know that uh, the Grand Floral Parade starts tomorrow at 10 a.m. The Dragon Boat races start at 9 a.m. So at the same time in this great city of ours, we will have parade floats going down the streets. We'll have Dragon Boats racing yeah. across the water. All we need now is decent weather.